So we are now heading down the other side of the waterfold and into Stevens Canyon. This isn't official Hey Duke, but it's a pretty common uh, alternate that I'd say most people take. The Baker Stevens Canyon Alt or whatever. So far it's been pretty great. And some bighorn sheep to start our day. Can't go wrong with that. This is the Stevens Canyon alternate, which is one of the more significant alternates on the entire Hayduke. Not just a couple miles in length, but a couple days. This skips the majority of the Escalante River section and instead follows Stephen Canyon. And from what I hear about the Escalante, this is a great choice if you're not carrying a pack raft. I have not done the Escalante River, but from what I've heard, it is a bushwhack for about 30 miles. You walk in soft sand on one side of the river for about 100 feet until the brush becomes too dense, and then you hope that maybe the trail is better on the other side. You cross the river, but the other side is not much better. Walking directly in the river is not much better either. This process of crossing and searching for trail continues for 30 miles. Or you take the Stevens Canyon alternate. Or at least that's my understanding in the difference here. So we are following this rim, I think all the way around, and at some point we gotta go down. So I don't think we're in Stevens Canyon yet. But it's been fun following the rim. So while we're out here, we've been trying to learn the rocks. So I believe the top is Navajo sandstone, kind of the wider, more bulbous, rounded rock. And then underneath it, all of these horizontal striations Redder, a lot more crumbly, I think is Cayenta Formation. And then below us, uh, the what we're walking on, these ledges, or these rims rather, are Wingate Sandstone. So maybe by the end of this trail we'll have that figured out entirely. There sure are a lot of them, and that's just three, but these are definitely three very common rocks we see. So while we were in Canyonlands National Park, Sprocket bought this bandana that shows all the rock layers and kind of has like maybe a tiny little description of them and that's been very helpful so it says what the rocks are on the left has like little images that maybe like depict things and then on the right maybe it shows some places where you'll commonly find those particular rocks Stevens Canyon has thus far become my favorite section of this trail so maybe my views are biased on doing anything other than this. Climbing the water pocket fold to then descend onto these ledges above the canyon floor, contouring its every twist and turn, descending to the very floor to then climb back up onto other ledges. It feels like a new little adventure with every passing mile. To see in the distance where we need to go, but for it to look near impossible until we get up for a closer look. I always tell myself on this trail that, hey, I know this person and that person and this other person that did this, so it can't be that bad, can it? I don't think it ever truly is. It's just so incredibly rewarding at the same time. Not just the fun and the challenge, but the beauty and the surroundings. The canyons and rocks and ledges and ramps that make this all possible. Every day is spectacular. <laughs> but this one in particular really takes the cake. I don't know what the Hey Duke has in store for us in the future, but it really does feel so special to be seeing so many remote places all strung together like this. Places that would be difficult to access for any kind of day hike. Places that you really have to go out with a backpack to see. Places you really have to be prepared for as there is nothing nearby for what seems like hundreds of miles.
We reconnect with the official Hey Duke at Stevens Arch, one of the largest natural rock arches in the world. We follow the Escalante River for just a mile and then enter the very popular Coyote Gulch. Considering the navigational trouble in the last canyon, a well-traveled one such as this makes for a quick and easy walk to the nearest trailhead to head into the wonderful town of Escalante. So this is the Escalante River. We just finished the Baker Stevens Canyon Alt. And now we kind of follow this for, I guess just half a mile. It's not too bad. I think if you don't take the Alt, you wind up walking this route, <laughs> not exactly in the river, but like through the bushes, bushwhacking on the sides of the river, or in the river like we are for about 30 miles. So Baker Stephen Canyon Alt, very good. So that is Stephen's Arch. I think one of the largest arches, natural arches in the world. Um, and it is overlooking Stephen's Canyon on the other side of this ridge here. And that is where we'd come from. Kind of got a couple glimpses of it, but it's definitely the best view so far. I think there's some very sketchy, tedious trails to get up there for anyone who actually wants to stand underneath it. Entering Coyote Gulch was at times a bit of a culture shock. To not see anyone else for the past five days, to then be surrounded by other hikers and backpackers making their way down the canyon. Around every corner, in every new flat spot, there was a group camping, swimming in the river or running around beneath the tall rock walls. It's great to see so many people exploring these areas for themselves, and honestly, it felt extra nice to see that this area wasn't too heavily impacted from all the traffic. Some braided trails here and there, but at the same time, Coyote Gulch still felt relatively wild. Despite surely the thousands of visitors per year. Hopefully, these places remain this way. Before we know it, we're walking the last few miles to a road. And it's 40 miles of washboard, bumpy dirt all the way into town. I think given the length and condition of the drive, it would be possible to get supremely unlucky with finding a ride here. A storm comes through and people probably aren't gonna take this road. A heat wave and people probably aren't gonna be coming this way for their day hikes. So for any future hikers, maybe start talking to people you run into on your way out of the gulch to see just how soon they might be returning to the car themselves. So this is the road into Escalante. There's cars here for people hiking Coyote Gulch. Uh, this road's like 40 miles, and I think like 30 of it is dirt. And this is how we get to Hitch. Uh, we've read that the record for someone waiting here is 21 hours, but I don't think it's gonna take nearly that long. That was a long time ago. But uh, that happened. <laughs> so anyway, Town of Escalante, here we come. So we got a ride most of the way, and it only took us one hour of waiting on the dirt road. So now we get to wait on this paved road. 